Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be working on the PS1. Uh, this is one of my favorite consoles from the 90s. I have lots of fond memories of it. And um, what we're going to be doing today is giving it a nice video and audio upgrade with the Retro Gem. So this is a uh, board that has been developed by Pixel FX. I've covered their work on my channel numerous times before. And what it does is it allows the PS1 to have a direct HDMI connection, a purely digital to digital uh, signal of up to 1440p. So what's really nice and convenient about this mod is you don't need any scalers or anything complicated. You just simply plug your PS1 into your TV via HDMI and you're good to go. What's also especially interesting about the Retro Gem is that it can be used on multiple consoles. So it can be installed on the Nintendo 64, on the PS1, the PS2, the Sega Dreamcast, and there are plans to add it to other consoles as well, including the Xbox and the Wii. So, <clears throat> really awesome uh, mod, and I've been looking forward to installing one of these for quite some time. So, today, what we're gonna do is take apart this PS1, and I'll show you how to add this to a PS1, and then we'll go over some of its features. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so taking apart the PS1 is actually very simple. <clears throat> you just need a Phillips screwdriver, and you're gonna have these six black screws on the bottom, and then the shell just comes right apart. Um, you'll notice right away that this console has actually been modified, so the capacitors on it have been replaced, and an X station has already been installed, and this is used for emulating the optical drive and allows you to play pretty much the entire library off of an SD card. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove this because we don't need it. And from here, there are three screws um, helpfully pointed out by arrows by Sony, which is really awesome. They do that with all of their products, and uh, it's really appreciated. And then um, the remaining of the Phillips screws are just right underneath the top of the shield right here. Okay, there we go. So yeah, as you can see, someone's been in here already, and the RF shield has been replaced and the X station has been installed. I actually tested all that in advance and it's all working perfectly. My suggestion, if you're doing the Retro Gem mod and combining it with other types of work like recapping and uh, installing an X station, is to do each one of these things one at a time and test the console and make sure it works before continuing. If you try to do multiple mods all at once and something goes wrong, you're not gonna know easily where the problem is. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and take this out. Just gonna remove this little flex cable right here and set aside the motherboard. All right, and from here we're gonna get started with the installation. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is remove a couple of components from the board and either replace them with low profile components or just get rid of them altogether. So first thing we're gonna do is get rid of the serial port right here because this is where the mini HDMI is gonna be located. We also need to remove these four capacitors and we're going to replace them with tantalums uh, because the gem is going to end up sitting like somewhere around here and this um, these surface mounts are a little bit too tall for that so they have to go. Uh, and then finally we're going to be removing this little component right here. I think it's a resistor. It's kind of small. Um, but that connects up to the clock and we're going to have the gem control the clock for us. Um, so in order to do that we have to remove this little resistor right here. Okay, all right, so let's get started with that. Okay, so the tantalum capacitors are now installed, and you can see that there is an orientation to these. So with tantalums, the stripe indicates the positive leg. Um, so you can see these are all the positive legs here, and then this 10 microfarad, the positive leg is facing this way, so all of that is good to go. 
<clears throat> so the next part is definitely the hardest part of the entire installation process, and that is installing the flex cables. So there are three in total. This is the controller flex, which goes here. This one's definitely the easiest of the three. Um, the second one is the audio flex, and that one is going to be positioned right about here. And finally, the hardest one, which is the GPU flex, which is going to be positioned right about here. Um, so we'll start with the easiest and make our way over to the hardest and, um, you know, we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so the two easier flex cables are out of the way, and now finally we're going to be taking care of the GPU flex. This is exactly the same flex cable as what was used on the PS1 Digital, uh, so it's a pretty challenging one to put on. The pitch between, you know, these pins is very, very narrow, um, and it's really easy to lift them and bridge them together and bend them, so you have to be really careful when doing this flex. Um, I highly recommend a microscope, like um, a binocular microscope that gives you depth of field. That's normally how I do this when I'm not filming a video, um, but what I'm going to do is just basically do my best without the, um, the microscope, and then off camera I'll take a look and just make sure everything is good, and if there's any bridges or anything like that, I'll address it at that time. But basically what we're trying to do is get an alignment so that the um, this little support leg over here is going to go on this copper pad, so not on not on the first leg, but actually on this copper pad. And then the first pad over here um, on the bottom is actually going to line up with a copper pad that's unused over here. So if you're not paying attention, you can actually shift everything over one to the left, or uh, sorry, one you know to the right actually. And that is not a good plan. <laughs> um, so firstly, what I'm going to do is just try to tack everything into place. Um, I've actually pre-tinned the, uh, the flex cable, as you might be able to see on camera. And so, yeah, I'm just going to line things up and just sort of tack it into place first. And then once it's tacked in, then uh, I'll move outward from the middle and get everything lined up from there. Okay, so that's more or less um, the whole thing tacked into place, um, but it's not finished yet. I need to really go over this carefully, and I think there's at least one or so bridge over here, um, but without the microscope, I really can't tell. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the microscope, and then we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so the GPU flex has been installed, and thankfully there really wasn't all that much to do once I put it under the microscope. I just had to solder a couple of connections in this area because they were loose, and I did find, I think, one bridge in this region here, but it was very easy to clear. I just added a little bit more flux and used a clean iron and just kind of wicked away the extra solder, and that was really it. Um, but if it's your first time doing this, you definitely want to be careful with installing these flex cables. And afterwards, it really helps if you check over your work with a microscope and make sure there's no obvious bridges between pads or between legs. And um, you can also use a multimeter and test continuity between points just to make sure you don't have any shorts. So, okay, now that that's all set, we're going to move on to the next couple of steps. 
So what we're gonna do now is just get the retro gem itself ready for, um, for action. So first thing you've gotta do is solder a couple of jumpers. So we are soldering C, D, and E, and K, because we're installing this in a PS1. And because I uh, removed a resistor near the GPU, we're also gonna be using the internal clock of the gem instead of the original clock. So for that, you also have to close um, this pad here, pad A. So, all right, that's all taken care of. Um, we're now gonna get this daughter board assembled right here, and this is gonna go on the outside of the shell. This is where the serial port used to be. And so you can see here's this little adapter board right here, and this is going to just line up like that with these, um, these nuts here holding it together. And I just need to get a screwdriver and put this thing together. All right, so you can see that I have partially reassembled the console, and the final real step that we have left is to install this intermediate board. So this is really what allows all of the flex cables to interface directly with the gem. Um, so to install it, what we're gonna do is get it into place, so it's gonna connect over here. Let me first start with the GPU flex. So GPU flex goes here. Then we connect to the gem here. And then finally, you know, these two go here. We don't really care too much about that at the moment, though. So, um, let me just do this one. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, all right, how does this thing get held into place? Because having it flop around like this is obviously not ideal. And so the answer is there is this little nut and screw that are going to hold it down. So what I did um, was first just pre-tin the bottom of this screw with a little bit of solder. You've gotta be careful though, because if you add way too much solder, um, it's gonna go into the hole and that's gonna prevent the screw from actually you know, connecting with it. So what I did was I just held it with a pair of tweezers like this and then using some um, solder and my iron, I heated around the surface until I just added a small amount of solder to the, to the edge of this. So the next step here really is just going to be to to get this situated where it's going to be. And that's basically where it needs to live, right over there. So now that that's done, I can actually disconnect it from the cables. And ideally, be very careful. It can't move because we need it to be in the right perfect spot. And so now, what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of solder to this ground plane here. And I'm gonna hold it with these forceps so that ideally it doesn't move too much. Just gonna tack it down. Now. That did not work well. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to check. It's, it's soldered onto the board, but I'm gonna have to check it again. But it's just barely soldered onto the board, so if it's off a little bit, I'll be able to, to move it and adjust it. Oh, it's actually pretty, that's pretty damn good. I'm surprised. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty damn good. Okay, so yeah, because all of the, the important thing is that the audio flex and the GPU flex can get installed and not get warped or distorted in any way. And it looks like that's actually going to work rather well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just heat this up, add a little bit more solder to the other end, and just really lock this thing down so that it's connected to the ground plane. By heating it up in chunks like this, it also prevents the entire thing from warming up, which is gonna keep it from coming free and moving around. But, all right, there we go. I think now there's a pretty good amount of solder 
onto that and it's gonna be connected to the board. Yeah, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is just connect up our flex cables. It's easier to connect this one up in the air like that. And I think we're all good to go here. So yeah, that is the complete retro gem installation. Um, you'll notice I have this cable flopping here. I still have to connect up the X station and I actually have to do this one too. This is the controller flex. So I gotta take, take care of that. That goes right here, just like this. Actually, let me just do that right now. Okay, now we're good to go. Um, let's go ahead and assemble this thing and give it a test. Okay, so I actually forgot a very important step. So let me just go through this one little thing really quick. Um, there's a jumper that I completely forgot about. So right over here on the intermediate board, um, there's this little jumper that says CLK for clock, and you actually have to close that, um, at least the way that I did the installation, because I'm doing the clock mod where the, uh, the gem takes care of the clock signal for the PS1. So if you're doing that, then you need to close this jumper as well. So I forgot that. If I didn't remember, I would have just had a black screen. Um, the other thing I forgot about is the Wi-Fi antenna, which is just gonna sit right over here on the edge of where the power supply is. And then it just plugs into this little socket right over here. There we go. And you're just gonna route this kind of kind of like that, more or less. Okay, so let me go ahead and assemble this thing. We'll have a look at the final results of the console and then we will give it a test. Okay, so everything is all set and reassembled and I've gotta say that this PS1 looks really, really nice. So if you open up the lid, you can see the um, 3D printed mount by LaserBear, and then we've got an SD card loaded with just a couple games for testing purposes. And um, I've got to say, everything I've ever gotten from LaserBear looks really exceptional. And I know this isn't really part of the installation, but I'll have a link in the description for the X station and this um, SD card extender, just because it makes it look so clean. Um, yeah, and I just love their products. So let's take a look on the back, and here's our mini HDMI port and you can see that that looks excellent. I'm not sure what kind of material this is for a 3D print but it looks really good. I, I really like the look of it and uh, it has this nice textured kind of feel to it. So so yeah that's all ready to go. Let me just plug this thing in and uh, yeah let's go ahead and give it a test. Alright, there we go. Looking good. Okay, um, so I just have a couple games here just for testing purposes. So to do a proper test of um, the, uh, the Retro Gem on the PS1, you need a game that has some kind of FMV cutscene, and then you go into the test menu and you've got to activate the self-test option while that FMV is playing. So I always use Soul Blade for this because it has an FMV right at the beginning. So let's go ahead and load that game. Medical. Okay. So... I've got it loading, and um, to get into this menu, you press L2, R2, Square, X, and Start all together, and it brings up the Retro Gem menu. And from here, you can make all sorts of changes. You can um, change the output resolution by going into this video over here. You just go to Output Resolution, and with this particular version, I have 480p and 720p. There's another version that can do higher resolutions of up to uh, 1440p. And uh, it's updatable via software, so technically this version could be updated to the more fully fleshed out version just using a software update. Um, there's also options for um, changing scan lines and quite a number of other things, but it's really kind of out of the scope of this video. I was doing this video mainly just to show you how to put one of these together, um, and it would really be a separate video all to itself about talking about the features of the RetroGen. So, okay, back to the self-test. To do that, you've got to go to the system here, and then you go down to self-test. 
and while you have the FMV video running, you can see that there are hearts on all of the various lines. So this is great. This tells me that all of the connections on the GPU flex are correct. If they weren't, you'd actually see an X here, and you could actually take this information and match it to the pinout of the GPU and find out exactly which pins are either not connected or maybe bridged to a neighboring pin, and then you can go back and fix that. But thankfully, in our case, everything is looking perfectly here, so that means our installation is all set. So, so yeah, that's it for this week's video. I mean, I am really impressed with the design of this mod. I really love the final results. It looks exceptional. Um, and at the end of the day, it's just such an easy way to connect this thing to a modern display. You don't need to learn anything about, you know, SCART cables or component or scalers or anything like that. You just plug it into your TV and you enjoy it. And uh, certainly if you've got a setup that you want to move around, like if you do fighting tournaments or, you know, just take it to a friend's house, it's just so easy to just plug it in and enjoy. Um, so yeah, that's it for this week's video, and if you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out every Friday, and of course, if you have a console that you need repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.